What we're going to talk about today is section 7.5, the first part of section 7.5, and this is going to deal with graphing our tangent and cotangent functions. So we've already seen how to graph sine and cosine. We've talked about the idea of period. We've talked about amplitude, and we've talked about all the different transformations. We've dealt with x-axis reflections. We can do y-axis reflections. We've talked about vertical and horizontal or phase shifts. Um, remember that the vertical shift, the up or down, is always the last thing that you want to do. All right, what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about these two, and there are some slight differences. The transformations work essentially the same way, with a couple of little tiny twists. Um, but there are certain distinctive characteristics of tangent and cotangent that are different from sine and cosine. We're actually going to start with y is equal to our basic cotangent function, y equals cotangent of x. And the first thing that you need to understand is unlike sine and cosine whose starting period was always 2 pi, the cotangent function has a period of 1 pi. So that's why when we talked about that b number, that period adjustment number, I always talked about the new period being equal to the old period divided by b. I didn't say 2 pi divided by b, even though the two graphs we were working with both had an old period of 2 pi, a normal period of 2 pi. The reason I worded it that way is the fact that when we get to cotangent and tangent, their periods are both 1 pi rather than 2 pi. But b still operates the same way, as we'll see in just a couple of minutes. Now, amplitude is a little bit different here. We'll come back to this in just a moment. So let me show you what the graph looks like first. We're going to graph this just like we did with sine and cosine. We're going to graph one period. And what we're going to do is we're going to start at the origin and graph our period going to the right. All of our graphs start at the origin and move to the right, just like sine and cosine, with one exception, which we'll see in just a few minutes. Tangent is the only one that's the exception. So my period is 1 pi. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out here and make this pi. And just like we did with sine and cosine, I'm going to cut that in half for pi over 2. Cut it in half again, which is now pi over 4. And we have 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, and 4 pi over 4, which is pi. Now, here's my 1. Here's my negative 1. So this looks very much like what we would do for sine and cosine, except the period is 1 pi instead of 2 pi. Now, if we think about the values, remember that cotangent of x is really cosine of x divided by sine of x. And so the, fir the second place where we have a major difference between um, sine and cosine versus cotangent is the fact that besides the period being different, because we have this ratio, this fraction, we have to worry about sine of x being equal to 0. And where is sine of x equal to 0? Where sine of x is equal to 0 at 0 radians and at pi radians. And so what we end up with is we end up with, when we make sine of 0 into 0, we get cosine of 0, which is 1, divided by sine of 0, which is 0. That's undefined. And so what we end up with is we end up with a vertical asymptote anywhere where the sine curve is equal to 0, namely 0 and pi. Okay, And so we end up with these two asymptotes. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to sketch those in. They're not technically part of the curve itself, but you want to draw them in because they're going to help guide our curve. You don't want to cross those or bump into them accidentally because you didn't draw them in, because I'm going to have to dock you points on that because it's not correct. We can't divide by 0 and get a y-coordinate. So you want to put your asymptotes in. So at 0 and at pi, this guy is going to be undefined. Now, at pi over 2, cosine is equal to 0. Sine is equal to 1. 0 divided by 1 is 0. So we're right here at the center line. I'm going to change this to red. If I go to pi over 4, cotangent has a cosine and a sine value of rad 2 over 2 and rad 2 over 2. That's going to give us a value of 1. At 3 pi over 4, we're going to be down here at negative 1 because at 3 pi over 4, which is quadrant 2, cosine is uh, sorry, negative square root of 2 over 2. 
and sine of x is square root of 2 over 2. Negative divided by positive is going to give us a negative 1. And what you end up with is you end up with a graph that looks like this. Now, with sine and cosine, we talked about our five guide points. Notice I'm not using five guide points with cotangent, but I am using five guide objects. I'm using two vertical asymptotes. I'm using the center point, the higher up point on the left side, the lower down point on the right side. So there are still five guide objects. They're not just all points here. So this is what our y equals cotangent of x looks like. Now, what we're going to do is we're now going to talk about the idea of amplitude. Now, this thing would then repeat itself, I should say. So from pi to 2 pi, if I went out to 2 pi, there would be another vertical asymptote. And the graph would go like this. So it would hit right here at, in the center, which would be at 3 pi over 2. And then it would continue again like this. And it would continue again like this. You get the idea. All right, what I want you to notice is I want you to notice amplitude. And typically what people would think is, okay, well, there's a 1 in the front, so our amplitude must be 1. Well, that's incorrect. And the reason it's incorrect is you have to remember that I defined for you that amplitude is equal to the maximum minus the minimum divided by 2. Well, what's our maximum value here, our maximum y value? Well, notice this thing zooms off to positive infinity. So that gives us positive infinity minus this thing zooms off to negative infinity. So minus negative infinity divided by 2. Well, what some people think is that that's infinity plus infinity, which is two infinities divided by 2, which is just infinity. Well, that's not correct. Because remember, we've talked about it before, this infinity is a concept, it's not a number, and we can't do any kind of arithmetic with it. So the idea is that to do maximum minus minimum divided by 2, we can only do that when these are actual values. And this is not an actual value. This just zooms up and up and up forever. And so this is not correct. As soon as you see that this guy is a positive infinity, that means the amplitude is none. There is no amplitude. OK? Now, does that mean that we're not going to end up with numbers in front of our cotangent of x in our equation? No. We can have numbers there. And we'll go back to what numbers there meant when we dealt with non-periodic functions in order to graph those. So let's take a look at one of those. So now let's take a look at the following equation. y equals 3 cotangent of 2x. And let's talk about how the different transformations come into play. The first thing that you should notice is that we have a 2 in front of the x. That's our b, remember, from sine and cosine. This is what affects our period. And so our new period is going to be equal to the old period divided by b. And so we have our new period is going to be the old period, which for cotangent is 1 pi divided by b is 2. So here's our new period, pi over 2. So right away, when I go to graph this, let me change colors back to blue. I'm going to go out here to pi over 2. Now I'm going to cut that in half, pi over 4. Cut it in half, pi over 8. 1 pi over 8, 2 pi over 8, which is pi over 4. 3 pi over 8, 4 pi over 8, which is pi over 2. And so now, where you're going to have your vertical asymptotes are going to be at the beginning of the period and at the end of the period. Because at 0, if I plug in 0, I get cotangent of 2 times 0, which is cotangent of 0. It's undefined. If I plug in pi over 2, I get cotangent of 2 times pi over 2, which is cotangent of pi, undefined. Because our sine values are 0, we can't divide by 0. So you're always going to have your vertical asymptotes at the beginning and end of the period for cotangent, just like this. Now, normally what would happen is we would have 1 and negative 1. And so in the middle of our period, we'll be right on the center line. Let me change to red. No, I'm going to change to green. Right on the center line. 
Halfway to the center, we're up here at 1. Halfway from the center to the end, we're down here at negative 1. And so normally, this would be our cotangent of 2x graph. Hopefully, everybody's with me. The problem is, we also have this 3 in here. But remember that our amplitude is not 3. Our amplitude is none. There is no amplitude on this. So what does this 3 do? Well, going back to things like y equals x squared, remember y equals x squared was your basic parabola. If we did y equals 3x squared, what did it do? Well, what it did was it took each of our y coordinates and it tripled it. And so what it gave you was it gave you a skinnier, steeper graph. What it's doing is it's affecting the slope of the curve at every given point. You'll learn more about that in calculus. So that's the idea. So what's going to happen is this is going to work the same way. Okay? So I'm going to change this to negative 2, negative 3. And so if I triple all my y coordinates, if I triple 0, I still get 0. If I triple 1, I get 3. If I triple negative 1, I get negative 3. And you see a similar kind of effect that the 3 has on this graph, just like it had on y equals 3x squared. It makes it skinnier and steeper. We're increasing the slope of this curve at every point. And so this is what we end up with, and this is what I want to see in your work. I want to see the original one before you tripled the y-coordinate so that I can see that you're actually tripling the y-coordinate. That's very important to me. Make sure you show that to me so that um, you don't just change this to 3 and negative 3. I want to see that you understand what it's doing to the graph, and this is what I should see. All right, so that's cotangent. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the tangent function. y is equal to tangent of x. Now remember, tangent is equal to sine of x divided by cosine of x. So wherever cosine is equal to 0, that's going to imply that tangent of x is undefined. So that's going to give us our asymptotes in different places. And as a result of that, what it ends up doing is it ends up forcing tangent to be the one curve that doesn't start at 0, 0, the origin, and move to the right from there to execute one period. If we want to keep our tangent curve all together in one piece, then what we end up doing is we have to make an adjustment. And so let me show you the way I want you to graph y equals tangent of x. y equals tangent of x, you're going to graph this way. Notice I'm not even drawing my axes the same way, because unlike all the other five trig functions that start at 0, 0 and go to the right for their one period, tangent of x straddles the y-axis. Now, tangent of x has a period equal to 1 pi. So every pi, 1 pi, this repeats itself. We're going to get a curve that looks very much like cotangent, but it's going to curve the other direction, and it's going to be shifted over a little bit. Here's the way you want to graph these. First of all, the amplitude on this is also going to be none. We'll see why in just a moment. But I want to talk about the period. Tangent is the only one that you do this on. What you do is you cut the period... in half. Whatever the, period, the real period should be, regardless of what number's here, okay, no matter what it comes out to be, you're going to cut the period in half. So for example, take 1 half of pi and you get pi over 2. Plus or minus that number equals x are going to be your vertical asymptotes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to pi over 2, and I'm going to go over here to negative pi over 2, and those are going to be my vertical asymptotes. T 
tangent is going to occur in between those. Now, tangent works very much like cotangent. First of all, I'm going to cut this in half to get pi over 4. I'm also going to cut this in half to get negative pi over 4. Right in the middle, this thing is going to be sitting on the x-axis. There's 1, there's negative 1. At pi over 4, tangent is rad 2 over 2 divided by rad 2 over 2. It's equal to positive 1. At negative pi over 4, which is down here, tangent is going to be negative 1 because sine is negative, cosine is positive. And so what you get is you get a curve that moves towards its asymptotes, but it goes this way. It looks very much like y equals x cubed. Remember our y equals x cubed parent function? It's not y equals x cubed, it just has that look to it. Remember, y equals x cubed does not have any asymptotes. So this one is bounded differently than y equals x cubed is. So this is what y equals tangent of x looks like. So it straddles the y-axis, which means that the period being pi, half of that period, or pi over 2, is to the right of the origin, and the other half of that period, being pi over 2, is to the left of the origin. We'll see what happens when we have an adjustment in there in just a moment. Now, notice, as far as amplitude goes, notice that it has an infinite maximum, infinite minimum. That's why there is no amplitude. OK, quickly, let's take a look at one more graph. Let's take a look at y equals negative 2 tangent of 2 times x minus pi over 4. And I'm actually going to make this a 3. Let's put it that way. So we're not using the same number. I don't want to confuse the issue for anybody. So to graph this, we have a number of different transformations. First of all, this is going to triple the y-coordinates. Remember, there's no period, I'm sorry, there's no amplitude to adjust, so it's just going to triple the y-coordinates. This is going to be an x-axis reflection. This is going to change our period. So our period, the new one, is going to be equal to the old period divided by 2. And this is going to move us to the right pi over 4. So we have four transformations to do. So let's draw our axes. Actually, you know, I want to do that in blue. We're going to use red for our asymptotes eventually. Now, to figure out where my asymptotes go, I have to take this period, and I have to take half of my period, which is going to be pi over 4, which means that at pi over 4 and at negative pi over 4, I'm going to have my asymptotes. Tangent's going to be in between. Now, make this 1, make this negative 1. So, cut this in half, pi over 8. Cut this in half, pi over 8. Right in the middle, it hits the x-axis. To the right, it goes up. To the left, it goes down. Here's my graph so far. Now, we're not done. We still have other transformations to do. But this takes care of our period so far. Now, the next thing that I would do is I would probably triple the y-coordinates. So if I go to triple the y-coordinates, when I triple 0, I get 0. When I triple 1, I get 3. When I triple negative 1, I get negative 3. And so now my graph looks like this. Taller and skinnier, steeper. That takes care of tripling the y-coordinates. Now, I'll switch to black. The next thing we're going to do is an x-axis reflection. So if I reflect this over the x-axis, this stays put. This 3 is going to flip down and become negative 3. And our negative 3 is going to flip across the x-axis and become positive 3. And so what I get now is I get something that now looks like our cotangent graph, 
except it's not in the same location. It's been shifted to the left. But it has the look, the curve curves the same way as the cotangent graph. So that takes care of our x-axis reflection. The only thing we need to do now is we need to move everything pi over 4 to the right. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take everything and move it pi over 4. So here's pi over 8, 2 pi over 8, 3 pi over 8, 4 pi over 8. 4 pi over 8 is really pi over 2. But notice that pi over 4 is two of our marks. So if I shift this over to the right, pi over 4, this asymptote moves out to here. This asymptote shifted over pi over 4 to the right, moves two notches, and it's here now. So we now get this graph. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this point, and I'm going to shift it two notches to the right. I'm going to take this point, and I'm going to shift it two notches to the right. Take this point and shift it two notches to the right. And what we end up with then is we end up with this final graph. Now, I didn't do it intentionally, but in the process of doing this, notice that my asymptotes are really where cotangent starts out. My curve, because of the x-axis reflection, looks like cotangent. The only difference is that, um, that we've tripled our y-coordinates. But this is what you end up getting with the red one being final. Now, if you need to go back and rewind and rewatch that to see how we got from y equals tangent of x, to the basic y equals tangent of x curve, the blue one, um, just with the change in period to the final one, which is red. Rewatch that as many times as you need to so that it sinks in, and you'll see that we're really doing the same basic stuff, just a couple of little minor tweaks. Okay, that's it for this lesson. So there's your tangent and cotangent curves.